Recently, I released a video discussing my off-grid solar solution for powering my devices when I go car camping in the national parks. That system included two Bluetti power stations and a Bluetti solar panel. And during that video, I had discussed how it can be challenging some days if you don't have enough sunlight to keep your batteries up to top charge. One option, of course, is using your vehicle's 12-volt DC system to keep the batteries up to full top charge, but it takes a long time to do that. I mentioned in that video that Bluetti was going to be sending out a new DC to DC charger that works in conjunction with your vehicle's electrical system, but greatly amplifies the amount of power it will deliver to your batteries. Well, I have that system now. It is the Bluetti Charger One DC to DC power system. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it and see how it works, keep watching. All right, so what all do you get when you order the Charger One DC to DC charging system from Bluetti? Well, pretty much all of it is right here in my hands but it did come in three parts obviously the primary thing is the charging unit itself I'll give you a few more details on this and some close-ups when I get it hooked up to the vehicle in a moment on one end the output you have an MC4 connector very short but it screws into the output terminals here they're separate you attach it yourself when you get it and on the other hand on the other end is a 17 foot cable that is shielded and this is what's going to attach to your positive and negative terminals on your battery and then run this to the back of the vehicle that's why it is so long it also came separate and again you attach it when you get it here there is a 60 amp breaker switch in the system as well it comes in nice it, it works as a fuse or a breaker switch if you will but better than that it also works as an on off switch for the system as well now in addition to those things let me just lay that down you get a couple of other things, obviously a manual, well detailed, lots of information, warranty information, everything else is inside the manual. And a small box of assorted pieces. Now what I mean by assorted pieces are, first off, there are some mounting screws uh, for use for mounting the unit on the inside of the vehicle, if that's what you decide to do. There are additional terminal caps on it as well, and even a small little wrench that helps you tighten down the screws when you're putting the wires together in the Blue Eddy in the uh, DC charger. All right, that's everything you get, but that you are gonna need one more thing. You're going to need a cable that will go from the charging system, MC4 on one end to match the MC4 on the charger, and whatever your power station will accept. In this case, I'll be using the um, Blue Eddy AC70, which uses an XT60 connector. So you, that'll come with your power station. And the reason they don't include it is, of course, your power station may use something completely different. Now, just before we get to the demonstration, I just want to go over a few of the key features and performance specifications for the Bluetti Charger One, because I think that may help you decide whether or not this is something you're interested in looking at. So to start with, Bluetti claims that the Charger One will increase the input wattage to your power station by up to six times. Now, of course, that's depends on your power station, the size of it, and what input voltage it will receive. It is controllable by a Bluetooth app, and I will give you some screenshots of the Bluetooth app, and what I found is that there are presets in the app for all the Blue Eddy power stations I own, and of course many that I don't own, but it also has a customizable portion where you can set it to a specific voltage depending on what your brand of your power station is and what it will accept in terms of voltage. And as I mentioned, it is controllable by a Bluetooth app, so it does give you a, a real-time monitoring of what's taken place. Now, here's the single most important thing to me, and I expect many of you as well, is what will it do to my car? Uh, my car is still under warranty, so I was a little cautious about connecting this up until I went through the manual to see what kind of protections it has. And it has intelligent voltage monitoring, which also not only starts with monitoring the input voltage to the charger, but also the output voltage. So it's protecting your car. In fact, it it won't even turn on unless your car is running. It can tell the difference between the car sitting with the engine off or the car with the engine running. It also makes sure that it does not draw so much power that it's pulling from your battery and not being able to replace by the alternator as it's running. So it is perfectly safe to use with any vehicle that has a 12 volt or even a 24 volt system for that matter. Now, as far as the performance specifications, the big ones are the operating temperature. This will run between minus four Fahrenheit 
and 140 Fahrenheit. And you, that's quite a range, of course. But when you think about it, this is intended to be mounted in the trunk of my vehicle. Now, I don't have it permanently mounted yet, but I'll show you the setup I have in a minute. But it can get warm in there in the summertime. So you want a system that is rated to run at rather high temperatures. And 140, I don't think my car ever gets quite that hot inside of it. So I just put that out there as well. Okay, what we're going to do now is I'll, I'll uh, hook the system up to the vehicle. I have my power station, the Bluetti AC70, inside the vehicle. I want to make sure you can see the display this time. I had problems with that recently in another video. I'm going to show the input wattage off of the car's standard 12-volt system, and then I'll change over and plug in the charger one so you can see the difference. All right, to save just a little bit of time, I'll just talk about how I attach this to my vehicle, because really this is going to be specific to your vehicle. So I have the negative terminal of this system attached directly to the frame as a grounding, and I have the positive attached directly to the positive terminal on my battery. So that's simple enough, right? It's just a matter of finding a good attachment point. You do have to have this well attached. You want to make sure you've got a lot of contact with your positive and your negative or your positive and your ground in order for this to work. And oh, that, that's something I learned during my testing phases. I was not getting good contact until I changed my location of my ground. And the system itself actually told me that it was not going to work. It, there's a flashing signal that tells me that I don't have a proper attachment to the frame itself. So that was kind of convenient and nice to know as well. I didn't, otherwise I may not have known what was going wrong. Okay, so what I have here is my blue Ready AC70. It's sitting on the passenger side seat of my vehicle. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to see it and I can make sure that it's not so uh, light out that you won't be able to see the display. Uh, what I'm going to do is turn the vehicle on. I have the regular 12 volt system or a 12 volt attachment plugged in to the vehicle's uh, auxiliary port in the uh, glove compartment there. And I'll plug it in and you'll see that the power station will power up and then it will start showing the wattage. So let me just turn the vehicle on, then we'll plug this in. All right, so the vehicle is now running. I will plug in the XT60 and you'll see that immediately it lights up the display. Uh, you can see I'm running at 48% of my battery capacity. I intentionally ran it down a little bit just so that we can do this demonstration. The input wattage is now showing at 108 watts. What I find is that it will level out a little bit, 108, 109. Uh, that's about the most I've ever gotten out of my vehicle or, uh, you know, when charging it directly off of the standard 12 volt DC system it has. Now, there's something I want to point out here while we're just showing that is my uh, a Bluetti AC70 has right here on this below the charging port the voltage that it will accept 12 volts to 58 volts at 10 amps, delivering a maximum of 500 or accepting a maximum of 500 watts. So that's important to know because that's the numbers you want when you're determining what your input to your power station is going to be from this system. And of course, the manual does a good job of explaining that. So the Bluetti AC70 is a good demonstration for this. So the other thing you need to know about this is, is that the battery or the power station has 768 watt hours of storage capacity. That's the how much the power will actually uh, can be stored in it. Now what you're seeing right here below that 48% now is that it's going to take 3.6 hours or now saying 3.5 hours to charge this battery to 100% off of the vehicle itself which means if I was camping and I had started off had the same uh, mount percentage left of my battery it would take three and a half hours of letting this sit and run at my campsite in order for it to fully charge. All right, let's unplug the 12 volt coming directly from the vehicle itself and then we'll plug in the charger one. So when I unplug the 12 volt system, it dropped from 110 watts to zero. Now we're gonna plug in the charger one, but I wanted to give you a couple of close-ups of it as I do. Start with, there are the input leads, the heavy cables running from the battery terminals to the back of the charger one. And you can see one of the fan ports. It does in fact have two fans on it to keep it cool while it is operating. On the front of it, you can see where the output cable is to the MC4 connectors. And of course I have the extension MC4 to XT60, which is of course what my Bluetti AC70 will accept. You can see that there is a green light 
on the charger itself indicating that it is operating properly and ready to go. So we'll plug this in. It will take a minute or a moment, I guess, for the AC70 to recognize the new input. And it's starting to climb. And now we're leveling off at 430 watts of input power. So more than four times what the vehicle itself could deliver to the power station. And that's pretty impressive when you think of it. One quarter of the time, if this had been right down to zero, my AC70, it would have taken close to eight hours of letting the vehicle run in order to charge the power station if I was just using the regular 12 volt system. But with the Charger One, it will take approximately four hours from zero to 100%. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the app that allows you to monitor and or control the charger. So I have the charger installed on the Bluetooth app. It's connecting with the power station now. And it's shown me that the charger itself is drawing 13.9 volts from the car. That's not directly from the battery. Well, it is directly from the battery, but the alternator is what's increasing it up to there and is delivering to my power station 56 volts. It's varying up and down between 55.9 to 56.1, so it does move up and down a little bit, but you can see now it's showing that it's delivering 444 watts of power, 445, 46, again, directly to my power station. So that's the real-time monitoring for the power station. All right, a few closing thoughts for the Bluetti Charger One DC to DC charging system. So, you know, for me, this is really going to be a game changer when I go car camping at the national parks. I don't have to rely on solar power, although it'll still be my primary source of charging, my power stations but I have the assurance now that if the sun doesn't shine and I have no access to the AC systems to recharge the, the power stations up that I can charge them up in very short order with this system. I mean it went from as you saw from 100 watt input off of the battery which would mean almost eight hours to charge the uh, AC 70 from zero to just uh, just well 430 watts which is just under two hours. That's a huge difference. Now that's from zero to 100%. If it only really just needs a top off, you're not gonna take very long at all to use this system to charge your battery up. And of course, you can use this while the car is in motion. So if you're driving from one location to another and your battery's quite low and it needs to have a full charge and you're not likely to get it in the time you're actually on the road using a, the regular 12 volt system, you can rest assured that in very short order, this is going to completely charge your batteries without any any problems at all. So yeah, for me, it really is a game changer. It really makes it a lot, how, how should I say, I have a lot more confident that I won't run out of power at any given time while I'm out camping. And that's, that's a huge thing, depending on how important it is to have that power available to you. Okay, that's all I have for you today on the Blue Eddy Charger One DC to CC charger system. And I demonstrated, of course, with my Blue Eddy AC70. By the way, if you're interested, I'll put a link to my review of the AC70, as well as a link to my review or the discussion I mentioned in the beginning showing you all the Blue Wetty system I had my last car camping trip. But I'll put all of those links in the video description. If you have any comments or questions about this system, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.